Hello everyone, wherever you are in our wonderful world, welcome to my channel on Bible Topics, and I welcome all to stay agnostic, atheist, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, Jew, whoever you are, welcome to stay, because it's coming from straight from the Bible, and we all know, one thing that the Bible got going for is the Dead Sea Scrolls, so we know the Bible is one of the earliest type of creeds around. They may have borrowed some things from Sumerians, Babylonian maybe, but we know it's one of the oldest. It's a thousand years old, so it got some weight. So you can listen to it. And we know humans actually love the God of the Bible. So the topic for the day is the first shall be last. The first shall be last. Like I said, in all my years in church, when I was a child, Never heard nobody talk about this. I read it in the Bible, the book of Matthew. I read when they said it, but nobody ever gave a sermon. Sounds like I said before. I'll teach Bible. I teach it. I teach it. Most sermons, from what we know, they don't teach. In the Baptist church I go to, the pastor may read about six or seven scriptures, and for 30 minutes he's talked. Then he never go back to reference those scriptures again. He only show one scripture for 30 minutes, and that's it. So how can people really love the Bible when you just do that? See, the way I teach, I use scripture after scripture. That make you want to pick up the Bible and say, hey, where I got this from? Religious leaders, from what I know, they give simple sermon names. Five days to a wonderful fast. That's that sermon title on fasting. And they pick out three verses from the Bible and talk about that. You may talk about God got your area code number. That's their Bible sermon, like that. Basically, God know where you live at. But I, I take my title and my text and straight from the Bible saying, first you'll be last, and that's it. All right, so we're starting now. So, here we go. The first, here's the text right here. It said, the first shall be last. Here's this, the little honorable mention. The first will be last and the last will be first. That's the theme of this lesson. And the, and the information was gotten from one part, from Matthew 19. But many, we don't know what it mean by many. And you know, back in Jesus' time, when he dealt with people, his many was like 5,000 5, people, 10,000 people. So we don't know how many of those many are. It's not no five or six. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. The theme, first and last. So let's keep moving on. All right, now, for this, I got actual information from research. God is the ultimate researcher. God is the ultimate researcher. Here's the title. Blacks and Hispanics have much higher poverty rates than other groups. And when, I, when I did it on my web, Search, I typed in uh, worldwide racial group poverty. So when I went to my web search engine, I typed in worldwide racial group poverty or poor, whatever you want to call it. We see right here poverty by race. We see right at the top. Up at the very right top, the leaderboard. Here's the leaderboard. They had their ups and downs, their little dips. But, but at the top, the people at the top, right here. I ain't going to say it, but you see it. Remember, right now, these people are considered last. Remember what Jesus said? Right now, from the world point of view, these people are in last 
place when it comes to wealth, material wealth. They are last place. Then it goes down to number two, Hispanic. Then all races here, like American Indians, Indians, Pakistanis, Nicaraguans, Haitian, Haitians, and stuff like that. Then Asians here. No. Then white, not Hispanic. So we see who who's first right here. Not saying no names. Like I said, the last will be these people right here are in first place. The first. They have the most of everything. You got me? So we got last and we got first. Remember, so I'm just not reading the Bible. I'm giving you actual facts from research on Google. Let's see who's in last place. Let's see who's in first place. Moving on. Next slide. Rate. Rate of poverty by race or ethnic group in 2019. So what's that? Four years ago. So a stone throw away. Here we go. U.S. overall. The entire population. So this is basically talking about the U.S. Here we go again. Here's that racial group. Now I know it's a little bit blurry, but you can make out those letters. That racial group, 18.8%. So, once more, they are in last place. And as we saw earlier, Hispanics, number two, the number one. No, they're not number one, I'm sorry. No, wait, wait. When I said U.S. overall, that's all the groups. So I'm not going to include, I'm the, I want to go by certain ethnic groups. Overall, that means the entire United States. I want to go by actual ethnic groups. So black is, or this, this people right here, number one, Hispanic. Number two, Asians. Number three, and they say once more, non-white. So they are in first place. They are in first place when it comes to wealth distribution. Remember, I'm just giving you facts now. Not making nothing up. Got this information right off the internet. So before I get into the Bible verse, I want to give factual information first before I start talking about the Bible and what God say. Real life information right here. Real life. Let's go to the next one. Once more. It says, title, poverty rate, poor rates by selected racial and ethnic groups. Residents, again, 2019. So that's what it kept pulling up. White right here. So they they're looking at the glass. Yeah. White right here. Thirteen point three nine point seven. Oh, so this show the legend. Metro, non metro, so they live in like the country like area. You know, country the suburban area. Metro basically means they live in a city. So that's what the blue is for. Blue means this, roll, and yellow means this. So we got our little legend here. So now we see non-rural whites have more wealth than urban whites, but they still have the lowest. So they number one. Well, I'm going to leave that off. I want to do something. I bet I'm gonna have my number like it was before. I'm gonna leave my number like it was before. We go to black. Uh oh. By poverty. Non rural. 37.7% poverty. So they have a very high poverty rate when it comes to living in 
the rural area, when in the urban area, they said low. So hey, these people are number number one when it comes to poverty. Number one. Next one, American, Alaskan, Native Americans, etc., and Hispanic. Number two. And before when I said any race other than white, black, so I guess it can be like um Indian and stuff like that. They twenty point one for rural and sixteen point nine is uh city life. So they number three. And non Hispanics. Remember before it was called white. The number four. An actual white has the lowest poverty rate. So they're number five. So let's say it again. First, this they are last. They last because they had that astronomical astronomical thirty point seven and twenty point four. And these people has the most wealth. So they first. They are in first place. So we got the idea now. When it comes to poverty, which ethnic group seems to be the poorest? Which ethnic group seems to have it all? We got actual statistical facts here. Like in the church, no talking and talking and talking. Like most pastors. Priests and readers talk and talk and talk. I'm not talking and talking. I'm showing you facts now. It may not be the facts of the, the date that we live in. Most of the facts are from 2019, so that's a couple years ago. It's not too far off, but it's still facts. Now. I want to go back. So we got this. Okay. Oh, I'm going to go back to that slide in a minute. But first, I'm going to read this. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 to 30. And Jesus talking here. Peter answered him. We have left everything to follow you. Peter basically saying, we have become poor. We have become poor. Because we left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us in the new kingdom? So, you know, they became poor to follow Christ. Now, Jesus is talking. Let me underline. Jesus is talking now. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, at the renewal, the renewal, the restoration of all things. If you want to, if you want to hear more about that, you go to Romans chapter eight, and it give you an idea what, what this renewal thing is. But he said, renewal, renew, start over, renew, a new beginning, a new, renew, a fresh start. So he said, at the renewal of all things, all things, this whole reality, a fresh start. When the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you have followed you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So that's a glorious day. And everyone who's, who has and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much. So Material wealth. Remember, they said we left everything for you. We give all our material world wealth to be your servants, your followers. You hear Jesus say, For my sake we'll receive you getting a hundred times as much. So there ain't no spiritual gift, no speaking in tongues, no prophecy. He said, You will receive. A hundred times as much physical wealth and will inherit eternal 
life, so immortality. Now here we go. The main quest of our discussion. But many who are first will be last. This talking about end up renewal. Whoever is first now will be last there, and many who are last will be first. Remember, he's talking about the renewal was coming. Well, big shot now and a new kingdom. High chance you will not be no big shot no more. You're able to fire people now, but in that new kingdom, those days of firing people over. Now I'm going back to my previous slide, if I can. Here is an example of the renewal. Like he said, you're going to have eternal life. So there's going to be immortals here. This represents the new Jerusalem, the heavenly city. The earth will be renewed. No more fog caused by human beings. Well, I should say smog. You know, fog will still be there because that's a natural occurrence. No more smog caused by human beings. As you see in the water here, no more plastic de debris floating in the water, killing all the aquatic life. No pesticides to kill the trees and all that. If there's insects there, they're not going to bother the people who live there. They're just going to do their particular job. But this is an illustration when he said the renewal of all things. Now, you know it's going to look different than this. Because, you know, we live in a technological age, so it still may be technology there. But you got the idea when he said renewal. A beautiful existence. The earth becomes fresh once more. And that's dealing with Matthew chapter 9 when he said to be renewal. Again, here is an example of the renewal. We, we heard in Isaiah when he said the lion will lay down by the lamb. The lion will lay down by the lamb. And when he said, and it's a flaw with this picture. I'm gonna can somebody can somebody can you all determine what the flaw is? What is the flaw? By those graph I get I showed you earlier. It says a certain ethnic group is in charge. So they first. But in a renewal, the people who are last will be first. So is this how the people who are last look? See, that's the flaw. But I know who did it. The Gentiles, now this picture, and the Gentiles like to always prop themselves up. They don't like to stay with the scriptures. Because he said, in the renewal, the people who we call last now will be, be first. So they should be the ones in that picture. You know, the other people can be there too. But this picture don't show no other ethnic group. Not, not one other. And in heaven, there's going to be different people there. They don't show no other ethnic group, but we saw worldwide. And I was trying to, I said, I typed, when I went to the search engine, I typed in worldwide poverty. We see worldwide who's last. In the renewal, the last will be first. So they should be the ones in this picture. But again, like I said, because the Gentiles made it, and the Gentiles lived to prop themselves up. But God said, I'm going to send them, I, did, I made a video on this. He said, I'm sending them a strong delusion. So, this part of the strong delusion right here. But still, the main theme is the renewal. The renewal. But it's not the people who should be in the picture, though. The people who last, they should be the ones walking around like this. All right. Now, this is my last one. Matthew chapter 20, verse 13 and 16. And I, and I like to say in context. I don't like to pull one scripture. There's one of the places I like to show, try to have the scriptures in context. But he answered one of them. I am not being unfair to you. Now, this is a parable that Jesus was explaining to, his, to the people. Like I said, he, he spoke in such a way that the people understood him. But he answered one of them. One of the parable speakers is talking now. I'm not being unfair to you, friend. 
Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? A sum of money? Take your pay and go. Yes, I think he said, when we start, to everybody who's working, he said, I'm going to give you this amount. He gave everybody the same amount. Even if you start six hours later and a person came an hour later, everybody got the same amount. Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you, as I just explained. They all got the same, they all got the same amount of money whether they started at 6 a.m. or somebody came on at 12 p.m. Same amount. And, it, and everybody agreed. They said, yes, I will take that amount. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my money? That's what God basically saying. Don't I have the right to do with my creation? Or are you envious because I am generous? God is generous. And we envy him because he's generous to some people and not to others. But that will change. So here's the main crux right here. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Now, hear the important things about Jesus' parable. Whenever he gave those parable, he was relating it to the coming kingdom of God. All of his parables had to do with God's kingdom. So he let you know when God set everything up, the person who was last will be first. Last will be first. When you're talking about the pay. And the first will be last. And it's talking about last. And it's all dealing with the coming kingdom. Now, in hindsight, remember, remember what I showed you earlier. The ethnic groups who are last today in the new age, they will be first. And I know the Gentiles, they don't, they don't want to preach on nothing like that. Because the Gentiles want to keep power. And as we all know, those who have power want to keep their power. Those who have power don't want to release it. When Jesus comes back, as you know, he's taking over the world. Whether they want him to or not, forcefully or not, he's taking what is his. And when he take it over, he said, the people who were called last, who cried out to me for bread every day, who cried out for money to pay that electric bill, who cried out for money to pay that car payment, he said, they will be first. Mm -hmm. So this is my good people. Thank you for stopping by for this lesson. Like I said, something that I never heard in church. The first will be last, and the last will be first. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for whispering to me in the early morning hours to make a little lesson on this, something that we never hear about. The people in power want to keep the power, so they will never talk about this lesson. They want to keep power, but your word is eternal, and it will spread no matter what. It will continue no matter what, whether they like it or not. Thank you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Until the next time, good people, peace.